So we are discussing the features of liquid in a glass thermometer. The first two features we discussed, one is the lower fixed point. And which is zero degree centigrade. And the second one is upper fixed point. which is 100 degree centigrade. And we can mark these fixed points by placing in a pure melting ice or pure boiling water. Then there's also another thing which is important for this liquid in a glass thermometer is sensitivity. So sensitivity, how, what is the meaning of sensitivity for liquid in a glass thermometer? It means for a small change in temperature or for one degree change in temperature, greater change in volume, thread of liquid inside capillary. So for one degree change in temperature, if there's a greater change in thread of liquid inside capillary, thread of liquid inside capillary here, like you have two thermometers, thermometer A, and thermometer B. So there are two thermometers, thermometer A and thermometer B. And this is a 20 degree mark. Say the room temperature is 20 degrees. So both thermometers shows 20 degrees centigrade. So this was original, like the position. Now what happened? The temperature changes to twenty one degrees centigrade. So if the temperature changes to twenty one degrees centigrade, so the level of the liquid will change the thread of the liquid in the capital thread of liquid here. It means like this part is called a thread of a liquid in a capillary. So the liquid will expand as the temperature increase. So the liquid level will change. Example, when temperature changes from 20 to 21, this is the amount of liquid changes for thermometer A. And when the temperature changes from 20 to 21, the liquid level will change. Say this is the amount of liquid level changes for thermometer B. So from 20 to 21, say this was four centimeter. From 20 to 21, the thermometer B was only two centimeters. Which one is more sensitive thermometer? Which thermometer is having a greater sensitivity? So thermometer A is having a higher sensitivity or A is having a greater sensitivity 
So sensitivity refers to the distance between the one degree mark. Like if there's a greater gap or greater difference between the one degree mark, it means the thermometer is more sensitive. So sensitivity refers to the difference between the marking of a thermometer. If there's a greater gap between the one degree mark, it means the thermometer is more sensitive. Another example, I'm just drawing the capillary. I'm not drawing the bulb. I'm just showing the capillary example. Two thermometers are there. Same size of the capillary. The starting scale is 20. The starting level is 20. And the end level is 40. The starting level is, uh, say, 38. And end level is 42. Which thermometer is more sensitive? The lengths are the length of the capillary is same. I drew the capillary. Both have the, so this is thermometer A, thermometer B. The length of the capillary example, 10 centimeter. So from 20 to 40, it's for thermometer A. That's a capillary length for thermometer A. And for thermometer B, the capillary length is also 10 centimeter, but the scales are from 38 to 42. Which thermometer is having greater sensitivity, higher sensitivity? So B is having a higher sensitivity. Sensitivity of the thermometer depending on uh, different features that we'll discuss. So you can see only four numbers are there because from 38 to four degree, 10 centimeter means four degrees because 30 from 38 to 42. So means four degrees are there only. So four degrees is equals to 10 centimeter. So one degree is equals to 10 divided by four, which is equals to 2.5 centimeter. So means every one degree mark for thermometer B is 2.5 centimeter apart. But what about this one from 20 to 40, 10 centimeters so 20 degrees, because the number 20 divisions, you can say 20 divisions or 20 degrees is equals to 10 centimeter. So for one degree mark, 10 divided by 20, which is equals to 0 0.5 centimeter. So in this example, thermometer B is more sensitive as compared to thermometer A. So to check the sensitivity, you will check the marking, the gap between the one degree. If we are measuring a small temperature change, then high sensitive thermometers are very important, useful. Like if, for example, if I say a temperature was 40 degrees and now the temperature changes from 40 to 40.3. So when I'm measuring a small change in temperature, then high sensitive thermometer are more useful. But if I'm measuring a greater change in temperature, then low sensitive thermometers are more useful. Is it clear first the concept of sensitivity? How we can increase, how we can make thermometer more sensitive. So what we can do, number one, we can use a thin capillary, thin bore or thin capillary. Like bulb is same. If you have two thermometers, 
with same size of the bulb but one is having a thick capillary and another one is having a thin capillary so what happen you use the same amount same size of the bulb same amount of energy will absorb or is absorbed by the both bulbs but what happen because this is having a large area if they they will show a same change in volume volume is area multiplied by height if the temperature changes from 20 to 21 say this was 20 degree mark and this is 20 degree mark in this was originally 20 degree mark this is also 20 degree mark if i use a thin capillary thin capillary or a thin bore so what happen say the temperature of the surrounding changes from 20 to 21 degree so the temperature of the surrounding changes from 20 to 21 because we have the same size of the bulb so if we have same size of the bulb they will have same change in volume but you can see for thermometer a this is thermometer a so for thermometer a the area is more so its change in the height will be less because the volume change should be constant so it will show a small change in height or small rise in height from 20 degree mark but when you can see the thermometer b which is having a narrow capillary thin capillary so if it is having a thin capillary or a thin bore it's having a small area so if it's a small area it should show a greater change in height to have the same change in volume as compared to the first thermometer so it will rise to a greater height so as it rises to a greater height this is a 21 degree mark for thermometer a and for thermometer b a 21 degree mark will have a greater distance from 20 degree mark is it clear how a thin bore or a capillary affects the sensitivity of the thermometer so if we have two thermometers with same size of the bulb the one which is having a thinner capillary will show a greater change in the height so it will be more sensitive any doubt in this part how to increase the sensitivity of a thermometer that's one thing we can use a thin bore or thin capillary look what happen if i use a numbers you can understand with the numbers it will be easy to understand example as we know volume is volume is equals to area multiplied by height so when area is multiplied by height we will get the volume because we have the same amount you can see we have the same size of the bulb so if we have same size of the bulb when the temperature changes from 20 to 21 they should show a same change in volume so change in volume of a is same as change in volume of b but if i say the change in volume is 10 okay if area of this first one is 5 so how much the height should rise if change in the volume for thermometer a is 10 and the area of this capillary is 5 so what should be the change in height to get the answer 10 so it should be 2 unit i am not writing unit i am just using a number same thing as we know the volume for the second one the volume is also equals to area multiplied by height because we have the same size of the bulb so if we have same size of the bulb 
this should also show a change in volume of 10 but you can see this area is a smaller it's a thinner capillary so maybe the area is 2 if area is 2 what should be the change in height to produce 10 cm cube volume change so the height should be 5 so you can see when i'm using a large area if i was using a large area or a thicker capillary the change in the volume of the uh, the volume change is same but the height which the mercury or the liquid will rise will be smaller but if i use a thinner capillary the change in the height from 20 to 21 will be greater so using a thinner capillary increases the sensitivity of the thermometer is it clear now The second thing what we can do, uh, you can take the screenshot. There's also another way to increase the sensitivity. Yeah, the type of the liquid, less dense liquid, as well as there's another way uh, we can also use large bulb which contain more liquid so if i keep the capillary size same i'm not changing the capillary size what i can do i can use i can change the size of the bulb First one, I'm using a small capillary, a small bulb. The second one, I'm using a large bulb. Large bulb means more liquid inside. More liquid inside means greater rise in liquid, like greater change in amount of a liquid. So which thermometer will be more sensitive? Because it's a only small amount of liquid, so liquid will rise when the temperature change, but small change in a liquid will occur. Larger volume, larger bulb means greater volume of a liquid, so greater change in volume of the liquid for the same change in temperature. So, large bulb contain more liquid, which cause greater change in volume. So liquid rise to greater level. And you can understand this because here we kept the capillary same. Here we did not change the size of the capillary. Capillary size is same. So because more particles in a larger volume, there are greater number of the particles. So they move further away from each other. Is it clear now? Like how you can see when you have a small bulb, you have a small amount of liquid. So maybe you have two centimeter cube of liquid inside. So two centimeter cube is small amount of liquid. It will change, change in volume, but small. But here, what you have, you have 20 cm cube of liquid inside. And when it will absorb the energy from the surrounding, so it will rise to a greater height. That's why for the same change in temperature, it will show a greater change in height. So the thermometer B will be more sensitive as compared to thermometer A.
Is it clear till now? Or you can also use a yes, any question? Or you can use a liquid with low density or greater expansion rate. Like example, the two liquids which we are using, common liquids which we use, we normally use mercury and alcohol. So approximate for one degree change in temperature. So approximately this expansion of the mercury for one degree is small. And for alcohol for the same change in temperature it's having a low density so it has a large expansion rate because in mercury the particles are tightly packed together so it does not expand to greater extent as compared to that of alcohol so which thermometers are more sensitive? A thermometer which is filled with mercury or a thermometer which is filled with alcohol? Which kind of thermometer? Like example, I have two thermometers. One is filled with mercury. Another one is filled with alcohol. And both I kept the same size of a capillary because for a fair comparison, I should have uh, same size of the capillary same size of the bulb, same amount of mercury and alcohol should be there. So when I compare this one is the first one A is a mercury, B is alcohol. Which one is more sensitive? The one which is filled with alcohol because alcohol expand more as compared to mercury. So the one degree mark for alcohol are apart means greater distance between them as compared to that of mercury. So if you want to make a thermometer sensitive, highly sensitive. So we prefer to use alcohol in it rather than mercury. Then another property, you can take the screenshot. So we started the properties, the features of a thermometer, lower fixed point, upper fixed point. Then we discussed this sensitivity. Then it is responsiveness or quick acting. For a larger girl, it's more accurate. It should be less sensitive to take longer time. Actually, the the sensitivity is uh, time time independent. Uh, you don't consider the time like what you are thinking in sensitivity. You are thinking like because it's a larger bulb. So larger bulb is there. It contain a greater volume of the liquid, so it will take longer time to rise. That's true. But the thing is. For sensitivity, we don't care about how much time it will take to rise. For sensitivity, we just compare what is the change in the volume 
for one degree change in temperature. So maybe that's true. Maybe this will only take ten seconds. Example: This may only take ten seconds to show change in temperature, and this might take fifteen or twenty seconds to show change in temperature. But we we don't bother about the time. We only consider that if the difference in the level or the temperature marking is more, we call that thermometer as more sensitive. So here sensitivity is not referred or dependent on the time. It only refers to a change in the volume of the liquid. If a greater difference between the two marking on the thermometer, we call it is more sensitive, even though it might take longer time to show a change in temperature. The time, the feature which relate the time is called responsiveness or quick acting. So responsiveness or quick acting, it is the time taken by thermometer. to show change in temperature so how much time a thermometer will take to show a change in temperature that is called responsiveness or quick acting so in this case we don't bother about what is a change in temperature but if it record a change in temperature in a short time then we call that thermometer is more sensitive so example if you are inside the room and the temperature of the room is 25 degree centigrade and you are holding two thermometers in your hand you move thermometer a outside where the outside temperature is 35 and you move thermometer b in the same way you move thermometer b also outside and the outside or surrounding temperature is 35 thermometer a took 5 seconds to show that the outside temperature is 35 whereas thermometer b took 15 seconds to show that the outside temperature is 35 which thermometer is responsive or quick acting so thermometer a is responsive because it take so responsive thermometers so change in temperature in a short time interval so responsive thermometers shows the change in temperature in a short time interval so we prefer if we want to record an instant change in temperature we prefer responsive thermometer if we want to record want to measure a small change in temperature then we prefer more sensitive thermometers is it clear the concept of responsiveness and how we can make a thermometer responsive if we want to increase the responsiveness or if we want to make a quick acting so how we can uh, make the thermometer responsive what we can do number one we can use a thin glass bulb so if the bulb of a thermometer because the liquid is there inside the thermometer bulb and the glass is there for example this is a liquid so this liquid is inside the glass means around this liquid 
because it is inside the glass so there is a glass walls are there so if i use thick glass so thick because glass is not a good conductor of heat energy and why specifically we are using a glass so if it is a thick glass it does not allow the heat energy to pass easily so it will take time to respond so as it take time to respond because first the glass will absorb energy and then the energy is transferred to the liquid which is inside the bulb but if you are using a thin glass bulb so this is a thermometer and you are using a thin glass so this will allow this glass will allow heat energy to pass easily in a short time so which thermometer is will be more responsive a or b which thermometer will be or higher responsive rate so thermometer b because it's it's a thin glass so it will allow the heat energy to pass easily so this is one way of making a thermometer responsive by using a thin, thin glass yeah why do we use a glass why not like any conducting material so what is the reason for that finish this part i will answer your question motion is it clear okay now the question is why the bulb of the thermometer is not made up of metal why it is made up of uh, any this insulating material such as glass so a simple reason is that because what happened the glass itself is insulated like the temperature change for a glass because what happened look if i was having a bulb this is a bulb of a thermometer and i'm making the walls are made up of copper if these walls are made up of metal such as copper and there is another thermometer bulb which is uh, filled with a liquid this is a liquid and this is made up of a glass what is the characteristic of a glass glass is transparent material means allow the radiation to pass through 
So what happens if you are using a thermometer which is having, say, a copper covering, like a bulb is made up of copper. So this thermometer can only determine the temperature by conduction because it is made up of copper. Copper is opaque material. If any heat radiations are there, it does not allow the heat radiation to pass through so that you cannot measure the temperature or surrounding temperature or if anything is releasing the energy by radiation because it's a metal surface. Metal have shiny surface, so they are good reflectors. But because if it is made up of a glass, glass is a transparent material, so it allows the inner radiation to pass through it. So the liquid can absorb that energy and the liquid will expand or it will show a change in volume. Is it clear? Why specifically glass is used? Otherwise, if you use any like metal, then only possibility to determine the temperature is by having a contact with and only by conduction because the radiations cannot pass through this opaque material so the liquid is not heated so if you want to make a thermometer responsive we should use a thin glass which will make it more responsive or we can blacken the bulb the second thing if you blacken the bulb like bulb is having a dull surface dark surface so dull and dark surfaces are good absorber so most of even though the glass reflects some radiation but if it is blackened then most of the radiations are absorbed or greater amount of radiation are absorbed so what will happen when you blacken the bulb, it will absorb greater amount of heat energy. So if you have two thermometer bulbs, one is having a shiny surface and another one you blacken. You're using the same size of the capillary For both of them, so as we know, dull and dark surfaces are good absorbers, so most of the radiation are absorbed, but shiny surfaces absorb. Uh, are not a good absorber they are good reflector so small amount of radiation is able to pass but for this one most or greater amount of radiation to pass through so the thermometer a will be more sensitive sorry more responsive not sensitive sensitivity is another thing more responsive as compared to thermometer b Is it clear? Uh, there are more features. I will share another link once this will end. 